what's up you guys it's the curious owl here and this is going to be a book review for a book called Anamkara a book of Celtic wisdom by John O'Donohue essentially this book is very different from what I normally read I tend to stick to more fiction novels things of that nature but as many of you guys may know I may have mentioned this before on my channel over the last semester I took a class in college where it was a lot about myth and immortality and basically a lot of mythic literature things which was really really cool since taking that class I have been looking for different books on mythology from different areas of the world in order to try to expand my mind and expand my horizons a little bit because it was something that I was not very well versed in and since taking that class it was really interesting to me to want to find stuff like that so I found this book the entire idea of this book is to talk about you know self-love and how if you love yourself you are going to be able to do so much more because a lot of the Celtic practices seem to focus on being able to be one with yourself and being able to be one with yourself so that you can you know be able to be one in relationships and be one with the space you are involved in things of that nature it offers also a lot of wisdom in different areas of life things like love friendships being in solitude and experiencing death because there's a lot of things that we experience as human beings that we can't exactly explain how we go through them and so this is a really interesting take on how the human experience essentially is and how we can kind of go forward from the feelings that we have and from the things that we learn about ourselves as we continue to live on in our lives. The most interesting thing to me about this novel is the title of the book itself, Anam Kara. In the book, it tells us that it is a Gaelic or essentially a old version of Irish language word that means literally soul friend. It's someone who you're able to trust fully, you're able to trust with every single aspect of you, emotionally, physically, intimately, you know, kind of whatever. Just somebody that you f have full trust in in every single way and that you are able to continue to give that trust to is really interesting because there's a whole concept with that and how the soul friend is a really big part of the human experience and how it really helps to shape who we are and the types of people that we invite into our lives, how they shape who we become and the things that we experience. It's a really interesting topic that I think we don't really go into very often. And this book honestly opened a lot of doors for me as far as things I didn't even think about in the first place. As some of you may have known, I have talked about this in a couple of different videos, recently I've been really struggling with my own insecurities and my own anxieties and things of that nature. And it's really funny because this book literally has been helping me more than I think I had ever imagined. I honestly didn't even really know what this book was about. I kind of just saw it on the shelf and I was like, this is pretty cool. It's about a different area of the world I don't really know. Maybe I can gain some knowledge from it about the mythology and about, you know, the different stories that the Celtic people had. I didn't realize though that it was so much of a self-help book in a way because it does talk a lot about things like self-love and being able to love yourself fully before you're able to love others or you're able to open yourself up to others which for me, be my insecurities I've been dealing with recently have been the fact that I don't trust other people very much because I've been dealing with you know betrayal and rejection from other people in the past and it has caused me to be very self-conscious about myself. So to read this book and start to understand how it is that I can start to love myself again, to be able to love another and to love others in the future, it was really inspiring for me. So I think that if there's someone out there who may be struggling with maybe an identity crisis or is really struggling with their self-image or self-esteem, this is a book that I think is really gonna be helpful because it really, honestly makes you think about the things that you think about day to day and especially when it comes to how you view yourself it really makes you understand that what you are thinking of yourself may not exactly be the truth and it is only through you know a whole process of being able to remember the things you love about yourself and being able to 
bring those things back to your mind that is going to help you heal better. And I think that this is an amazing book for those of you who are going, maybe going through something like that. One of my favorite passages is actually in the very beginning of the book, and it was something that when I first read it, it really kind of solidified the type of book this was going to be. And it really just made me think about, you know, what it was I was going through at that time that I was started reading this, especially since I was going through so many different problems in my own mind with my own insecurities and things. But there was a whole passage that really struck me as important to remember and it's something I've been trying to remember every single day since I read it. So here it is. The heart is the interface of your life. The human journey strives to make this interface beautiful. It is here that love gathers within you. Love is absolutely vital for a human life. For love alone can awaken what is divine within you. In love you grow and come home to yourself. When you learn to love and to let yourself be loved, you come home to the hearth of your own spirit. You are warm and sheltered. You are completely at one in the house of your own longing and belonging. In that growth and homecoming is the unlooked for bonus in the act of loving another. Love begins with paying attention to others with an act of gracious self-forgetting. This is the condition in which we grow. This passage meant so much to me at the time that I started reading this because like you guys, I, like I said, I was really dealing with some very strong emotional problems with myself and things that I, my inner demons were really starting to come out. And so after reading that passage, I almost felt a weight lift off my shoulder, which is really weird. I've never had a book that has done that for me. And I think that's because I tend to read more of the fiction side of books, whereas I've never read something kind of more on the philosophical, mythological era that kind of just, you know, makes you really think and makes you really understand the world around you and how you view the world. So to read that passage and to have it sink in so much for me was one of the most amazing things about this book. A lot of this book really has some very strong quotes that I think a lot of people can take from that can help them be able to live their lives a little differently if they're struggling with you know their own insecurities or unable to figure out exactly who they are or what they want to do. There's a lot of good things that this book talks about that I think a lot of people need to be able to read and be able to understand because it's something that is not seen every day in contemporary writing and things of that nature. So like I said, this book really delves into a lot of different things as far as you know, mythology and philosophical things, more so mythology because they reference a lot of Celtic traditions and Celtic stories and poems that mostly surround the idea of being one with a space and being one with an area in order to be able to be more in touch with yourself. There's a whole idea in the Celtic tradition that the space is vital, the space is sacred because it is what you basically draw your energy from, you draw your experience from, is the space that you are in. And so that was something that I had learned in my Gods and Monsters in Immortality class and it was reiterated in this book and so it was really cool to see that that had such a big impact on the way that we go through our lives and our human experiences because the space that we do live in and we thrive in it really does end up shaping who we are because we draw from the things that our environment gives us. And so it's really important to be able to be in a space that you are able to thrive in if you want to be able to achieve a greater ability to love yourself in order to be able to love others. The one thing I will say that really kind of tripped me up with this is the fact that the language is very tough. It Well, it's not really super tough. It's not like a whole, uh, an entire different language. But for those of you who may be fami more familiar with a more informal kind of language where there's a lot of contractions and a lot of informalities, things of that nature, like that there is in contemporary, especially YA writing, this is very different from that. It is very formal, it is very eloquent because for one, it is from an author who is from a much more eloquent kind of language because Irish seems to be a little bit more of an eloquent language in my opinion at least, at least the way that they are able to construct stories and things of that nature. And it is on a topic that is very, very 
spiritual and very, you know, eloquent and elegant and things of that nature. So the language itself has to set the tone for the type of topic that it is. So if you're not exactly familiar with myth and spirituality, things of that nature, this may be a little bit harder for you to read. However, I wouldn't go so far to say as that it is unreadable for someone who is just getting into myth and things of that nature. If you're just starting out, this is probably a really good way to get into myth, especially Celtic myth, because a lot of it really does explain a lot of the Celtic wisdom and Celtic myths and folklore that is incorporated. So it's a really interesting way to get yourself involved with it and being able to get a good idea of what a lot of the Celtic teachings are in order to get yourself started with learning about myth and things like that. So if you're interested in it, please pick it up. It's really good. I definitely got a lot from it. But yeah, that's really all I had to say about Anamkara, A Book of Celtic Wisdom by John O'Donohue. I honestly will am going to be rating it. I haven't rated it on Goodreads yet, but I'm going to be rating it about four and a four and a half out of five stars because it really did a lot for me. It really talked a lot about some good things that I think a lot of people need to be able to read. However, the language sometimes was a little bit hard to understand just because it was so formal and it was so eloquent that it kind of almost threw me off a little bit sometimes, but overall it was really, really amazing. I definitely think it's something that if somebody is struggling with self-esteem or you know self-image issues, it's definitely something that they can pick up and be able to kind of look at themselves in a different way through. That is what it did for me, but I started reading it in a time where I was going through so much personally it almost seemed that fate had drew me to this book and almost made it this book the way it was because i was going through such a big change in my life and i'm glad that i was actually able to read it at the time that i did because i think it's really helped me with figuring out exactly what it is i need to do to better myself in order to get where I want to be in my life in different areas. So thank you guys so much for joining me in this book review. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. And as always, I will leave a link in the description for the book on Amazon if you guys want to go find it. I always do that for all my book reviews. And I will also be leaving a link down below for a blog I will be starting up. I'm going to be starting an actual booktubing blog because I've been wanting to do it for a while, but I wasn't sure if like I really wanted to do it because I didn't know if I would have the time. But in all honesty, I'm going to try my hardest to keep up with it, so it'll be a much more in-depth, I believe. I'm going to try to make it a little bit more in-depth than my videos, just because I feel like it's easier for me to write out something than it is for me to talk about it, because I feel like I can't get exactly everything I want to say out to people. So. Hopefully being able to blog it a little bit will be a little bit easier for me. So if you guys want to go check that out, you guys totally can. It'll be up hopefully by the time this video goes up. Not sure. It'll just depend on how busy I get when I go to upload this. And if you're not already and you'd like to be, hit that button down below to subscribe to become an owlette in our flock. And I will see all of you guys in my next video. Bye guys!